Welcome to another amazing episode of Health Up with your host, Anthony Harcher. Health Up seeks to enhance and enlighten the well-being of others. And today, we are blessed to have with us a pain coach, Dawn, oh, Dawn Caddy. <laughs> um, I'll uh, fix that up. Dawn Caddy. Um, so Dawn specialises in pain management and uh, pain resolution. Uh, and today, she'll be imparting with us her wisdom on chronic pain. So welcome, Dawn. How are you? I'm good, my love. How are you? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so great to have you on. <laughs> oh, Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's nice. Uh, my, yeah, our, our pleasure. Um, yeah, I'm really keen for the uh, viewers to understand uh, that you've walked in the path of, you know, people that may be listening. Uh, I've seen stats out there that, you know, 50% of people are suffering from chronic pain. And uh, you, you were one of these, um, and, and, and you found an answer. And so I'm really keen to uh, share with the viewers your story as to how you have arrived to what you're doing today. Yeah, sure. Um, so when I share my story, people are either shocked or they're like, wow, really? So I suffered pain from when I was about one. When I tra tracked back my history and spoke to my grandparents and my dad, I started with pain when I was one, ears, nose, throat, then it went into bowel, kidney, back to bowel again. Like just this whole host of different illnesses, diseases, and chronic pain. And the thing is with chronic pain, we think that it has to stay in the same place. And that's the interesting thing. It, it doesn't, it can move around. So the headaches might migrate into migraines or the migraines might then shift into neck pain then it might move into back pain, hip pain, leg pain. It moves around as chronic pain, mm -hmm. especially when there's not actually a physical reason as to why it's there. If the physical aspect of it, so they go to a physio and they don't understand why that person's in so much pain. And I started to research it when um, I was 22. So what happened to me when I was 22 is I was rushed into hospital. I was really, really sick. And I've been through the medical world in regards to issues with my bowel. And they discharged me. And I was out an outpatient for like two and a half years, Anthony. And they did, they did nothing. They just turned around the usual, it's in your head. Now, saying that to, at the time, I think it was like 19 and a half. You take that literally, I'm making that up. I'm insane. Am I seeing these symptoms? Am I making these symptoms up? And then when I was 22... I got rushed into hospital, I collapsed at work and I was in a really bad way. And then they didn't know what was wrong with me. I'd been to Mexico, I then was quarantined for typhoid. And then it became crystal clear that I actually had an autoimmune disease, a bowel disease, which was that bad that I only had one liter of blood left in my body and my organs were going into failure. And that's where my real health journey started and started to understand about how the body was going because with that came pain, I got IBS and I was in chronic pain with my stomach. Because they say that ulcerative colitis doesn't really give you much pain, but when you're being pumped full of drugs and you can't go to the toilet and you're bowel sensitive, then IBS kicks in because your bowel is fighting and it just becomes exhausted. Then you get a lazy bowel and you get constipation. So that's really when my pain journey, where I really understood that, you know what, if I'm gonna get out of this, I think I need to start understanding what the hell is going on here. So I was 22 when that started. I was pretty much discharged from hospital after about seven weeks of being in hospital. And I was discharged on 32 tablets a day, but I couldn't walk and I've lost the use of my legs because I've wasted away. So I was on these tablets and one day I'm like, okay, I have to go to the doctors every week to go get my kidney and my liver tested to keep my bowel that I can live without. This doesn't make sense. This, this does not sit right. So I spoke to the doctor and I questioned him and I said, why would I take all these tablets when they're actually causing issues with the liver and kidney? Because I'm having to come in and get blood tests to make sure. And 
in the long term, it ended up damaging my kidney being on all of these tablets. And that's a long term thing that I went through. But then what happened, me being stubborn, I started to research and I put it under remission. And it's been remission for like 17 years now as the bowel disease. And it's because I was like, you know what? There's a better way. And when you open up your mind to say there's a better way, an answer will always come. And mine was aloe vera at the time. I started healing myself through changing my diet, stopping the fast foods, not eating anything like that, sticking to the natural foods, not the man-made stuff, not the jarred stuff, none of that, none of the quick convenience. All I did was I just went, okay, if it's not alive, I'm not eating it. So if it's not fish or it's not chicken or um, beef that I know where it's come from, I'm not eating it anymore. I didn't do anything massive. It was just I weren't getting the convenience foods like you do when you're 22. You're at McDonald's and you're at KFC <laughs> and all of those things. I just stopped them dead. And I was like, okay. Yeah. I thought, right, I need to take myself off these tablets. I'm full of symptoms from just the medication. Yeah. And then I switched to aloe vera tablets. But this here, my mind was the most amazing thing. I would speak to my bowel every day and I would say, what's going on? What do you need for me to do? How are you coping? What do I need to do to heal? And I would talk to my bowel. That's how I put it into remission. I just did the small little changes to my health, but I communicated with my bowel and asked it, what does it want? Now, we get better, we get well, and we go back into the old ways. So I'd not actually learned to fully reprogram my mind to take that long term. So I went back down the old patterns of drinking alcohol because I'd stopped drinking alcohol, wanted to get the time back that I'd lost from this disease. So I went into that rebellious mm -hmm. mode. And then what happened? I then went into kidney failure. Mm -hmm. So I was on the journey again. And then I healed myself from, I was diagnosed with renal tubular acidosis when I was 11 weeks pregnant. So I'd gone into kidney failure again when I was pregnant. So then went through that process. And then when I was five and a half months pregnant, I slipped and ended up disabled. So it was a really rough journey. So when I talk about chronic pain, I've lived and breathed it. And I know how low it can take you in regards to mental health. They become one. And this is the thing with pain. When we talk about chronic pain, first thing we think of is physical pain. But chronic pain is emotional pain as well. It's your depression, it's your anxiety, it's your PTSD. That's chronic pain. It's just chronic emotional pain and chronic physical pain. Mm -hmm. But they're the same thing, just different ends of the spectrum. Once you've been in chronic pain for a long time or disease, you end up with the chronic mental side of it, the emotional issues. Mm -hmm. you... For example, with me with a disability, I had depression through isolation. I had two nervous breakdowns. And this is the thing that I'm out there educating is they're not different. We think that they are. Our mind and body are not two separate things. They work together constantly. And when one is out of whack, the other one is. They're so closely linked. So that's my journey in regards to pain. Yeah, thanks for sharing that uh, journey. You've certainly been through a lot. Uh, and there was, yeah, a lot of, lot of key points that I took away. Uh, in, in particular, I guess the, the starting one was around medication. And, you know, you're taking all the medication and it was producing all these side effects. And you're thinking, well, there's got to be a better way. And I, and I loved how you then never gave up on looking for that better way. And hence where you are today. So i um, just really keen to explore in, in more depth that path you took away, you know, letting go of the drugs. So, you know, most people are taking painkillers in, in, in relation to uh, uh, their chronic pain and they generally are having to increase the dose over time uh, to get the same, you know, I guess, uh, benefits from the drug. And that's not sustainable if you think about, you know, and as you said, eventually lead to other organ problems such as your liver and kidneys uh, that need to excrete uh, the broken down metabolites of the drug. So really keen to um, get more understanding of that 
approach you took and you know you did mention it in terms of you know talking to your bowel and getting connected and being really I guess intuitive in a sense of really you know getting inside of you and understanding what's going on and listening and then taking action so yeah please tell us more yeah so in regards to I'll go into the painkillers because that's very relevant for people who are listening who are on the opioids or they're popping the, you know, the neurofen and the paracetamol, they're, they're just as harmful because you're taking a lot more of them. When you're taking the opioids, you only need one or two, but when it comes to the neurofen, you might be taking eight a day. I know the clients who've come to see me are taking a concoction of all sorts of things. And if you're listening to this right now and you feel that you're taking far too many painkillers, I want for you to know that I was addicted. I was actually addicted to opioids. I had an addiction. And this is why I'm so passionate about doing this because I saw myself as someone who had been through health challenge after health challenge after health challenge. I was educated. I knew what I was doing. And they still got a hold of me. And this is why I do this because you just don't know. You have no idea the grip and the hold that they have because it's not just chemically that you become addicted to them. When you're in chronic pain, you completely rewire your brain and your nervous system to only see and perceive and feel and be in pain. If you don't rewire your brain, you will end up constantly being the cycle of it. So you might end up with the physical pain and you work on the physical pain and that goes, it then comes back as an autoimmune disease. And this is what I realized when I unpacked and unfolded the whole of my health journey was, yes, I healed that. Yes, I healed that. But it keeps coming back, does the pain? So there's something not right. And yes, I can communicate with my body. But what is it? What is it that I'm doing on a daily basis that's compounding for me to end up back in these cycles again? And when I really slowed it down, I realized that I had wired my brain from a very young age to be in stress. I lived in fear and I didn't even know or was aware because I'd been in stress for so long, I didn't know any different. So it was just putting out fires, even though I was reversing diseases. And I know that many of you will find that hard to access that information that you can actually reverse a disease, but it kept coming back in a different way. And that's because the root cause, which was my mind, was living in fear and stress. And you know what that does to the body. When you're living in that state of mind, the nervous system is producing and sending chemical reactions all over the body. And then your liver has to process that. So does your kidneys. Then your adrenals become fatigued. It's just this knock-on effect that affects us so it's about rewiring your brain is what I've found is the solution. That's how I'll put it, solution mm -hmm. to it. So you, you started with the rewiring process as opposed to, or you may not have been able to remove that root cause, you know, that was driving the fear and the That's right. fight or flight response. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. have to go into it. And you know what? It sounds like a big thing. Rewiring your brain sounds like this big, massive, huge, oh my God, what do you mean? You're going to grow in my head? What are you going to do? Hypnotize it. It's not like that. It's listening to your language and your language gives away major clues as to what's going on for you. It's slowing down, listening to your language and pulling out the major causes, going back in time and finding where did that fear come from in the first place? Your body will give you the information you don't need to go hunt and dig for it. If your body's ready to release and move forward, the information comes effortlessly. But we've been so heavily programmed on it that it's not, we can't comprehend that that has to be. We think that we have to go on this long journey of self discovery. We have to go through all of this. It has to be hard work, it has to be challenging. It's impossible because the medical world is the only way. I'm not disrespecting the medical world. They are absolutely incredible and amazing when it comes to acute, but you cannot treat chronic issues with acute management. It won't cut it. It won't get anybody anywhere. It's putting out fires and then it creates more fires. 
So in, in terms of this rewiring the brain, you know, there's a few techniques that come to yeah. mind. Uh, one of them is neuro-linguistic programming. Yeah. Is that a, a technique you, you've applied in, in that process? I'll be honest with you. NLP is a bridge. It's something to access in the beginning. There's a lot better tools out there. I've probably studied 150 tools and techniques out there. So I created the neural alignment method, which brings in the best in the world of what I've tried. NLP, there's a couple of techniques that I use from NLP, but I'll be honest mm -hmm. with you, it's, it, it's not the best out there. There's far better out there, especially EFT, emotional freedom technique, so much better personally than NLP. And how does that neural alignment technique work? you know, in, in, in comparison to NLP or emotional freedom technique, how is it working? Where do you focus and what do you actually do with the client? So with the neural alignment method, it's actually in not only empowering people to know how to use the different tools and techniques on a deep level, not a surface level, it's finding the perfect ones for them. So from 150 different tools and techniques, we find the absolute best ones for the clients, that's the difference. It's not in a box and going, this is the techniques, these are the tools, and these work for everybody. Because you and I both know everybody's uniquely different. And you can't put someone exactly. into use EFT or use NLP. A technique in NLP may be absolutely amazing for one client, for another it might not work. A certain part of EFT might be amazing. So we bring all mm -hmm. these tools and techniques and we trial and we test them. And I trial and test with the client and usually, intuitively, I know which ones work. So we get there really quickly. Mm -hmm. There's usually three techniques for each person. Mm -hmm. and those are the three techniques that they'll use for the rest of their life, which will have a massive impact. So then, not only are they rewiring the brain and the nervous system, but if anything stressful comes up, they can self-manage. They don't need to go into therapy for years. They don't need to go see practitioners. They're able to self-manage and regulate. And that's what I pride myself on. And just uh, for the viewers' sake, so that they, you know, we're talking a few terminologies here. Nice um, Neurolinguistic <laughs> programming, we, uh, we have discussed in a previous episode. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was just the last episode, actually, on um, how to um, help manage binge eating. Uh, so we spoke to an expert on NLP around that. Yeah. Uh, just in terms of the emotional freedom technique, what is that technique and, and how does that work? Okay, emotional freedom technique, putting it out there looks weird, very strange, unusual technique. You tap on your face on pressure points on your face. So this is a sequence mm -hmm. that you use. And what it does is it's incredible, so simple, but amazing. And you tap on these points. Okay. I'll give an example of... I'll share with you exactly how it works and then I'll give you an example of how you could use it. So mm -hmm. it's so strange when I, when I share it with people, they're like, do I have to do it? And I'm like, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> there's a way to get past that and beyond that. So how it works is there's a part of the brain called the amygdala. Have you spoken about mm -hmm. the amygdala before on any of your shows? No, so please, no. Uh, please. Yeah. yeah. So part of the amygdala, so basically the amygdala's job is to go, okay, this is a stress response. Something's happening here. Is there a file of this happening before? How do we respond and react to it? Then it sends a signal for the chemical reaction to take place. So if it's a stressful situation, then that's the alarm system to the body to go, we're in a stressful situation. It triggers the fight mm -hmm. or flight response. Now, what happens is when you use EFT, it sedates that part of the body. So your, so the thing with what goes on is you have a car accident and you tell your neighbor, you're at the hospital, you're telling the doctors, you're telling the nurses, you're phoning your partner up, your friend comes to see you, you're telling your kids, and then you're back at work and you're telling everybody at work. Every time you're saying that story and telling the story, your body thinks it's back in that car accident again. So you're re-traumatizing yourself, you're ramping up your nervous system. Again, you're drenched in cortisol, your immune system's what, 20% function when you're in the fight or flight response? You're, constantly, you're training your mind and your body to live in stress just because of that car accident. 
the body loves to find auto immersion and the easiest way to survive and live. So if you're constantly doing that for two or three months, you've completely rewired your whole body to be in stress. And what EFT does is it calms down the amygdala and it goes, this is not happening. There's no need to signal to the body any response. So it sedates, it's like a form of hypnosis, but it's self-hypnosis because you're doing the tapping mm -hmm. yourself. But you don't go mm -hmm. into noddy land or anything like that. You're consciously aware and you set up, you know what's going on. But what it does is it says to the nervous system, it's safe, you're okay. Mm -hmm. So when you put both of those into that state, then the truth of what's happening for you then comes out in your words. So say, mm -hmm. for example, you are driving along and there's some lunatic road rage. We find it all the time as people on the roads where emo emotionally spilling and projectile vomiting on everybody by cutting people up, banging, flashing lights. And that mm -hmm. happens to you and you're shaken up and you're like, oh my God, that guy nearly run me off the road or that woman nearly run me off the road. What I'd invite you to do is pull over because if you don't and you're in that state, you're in that state all day. You're not going to digest your food properly. Your immune system's not going to do its job. You're probably not going to sleep very well that night. Then you're going to tell everybody about how bad it was, mm. how what that person did. And it starts with an incident like that. And if mm -hmm. you can't let it go, you're living and breathing it. So you pull over and you go, can't believe that person cut me up. Who the hell do they think they are? And you vent the frustration. <laughs> what did you want to say to that person? I wanted him to, and it might be some obscene language inserting in there. <laughs> and you just completely vent out exactly what you want to say to that person. Exactly what you want to say to them. Exactly how you feel about the situation, that how much they've put you out of your day because now you've had to pull over, they've ruined your day. Whatever is going on for you, allow it to express itself and leave. Then what happens is, your body goes, oh, it's dealt with, it's resolved, but what do we do? Mm. We go to work, we tell everybody about the guy, the woman that cut you up and nearly run off the road, and then we get home and then we tell everybody at home, and then the next day we speak to our friend and we're telling them a week later, we're telling our friend, because we haven't fully expressed the emotion. So we feel mm -hmm. the need to share to be heard and understood. So we get caught up in the story and the story is what traumatizes the body. Okay, so uh, that would also apply well to uh, uh, P PTSD, right? Post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, so anyone that's been in a really traumatic situation and as you said, they've uh, lived it, uh, they've now survived it, however, they're now going to share that experience with everyone and they'll relive it and relive it and relive it and that's wiring the brain to get stuck on that particular stress response to the incident. And, they, and I think what you said earlier was that that wiring becomes so strong that they're like permanently in that fight or flight mode, um, even though they might not be sharing that, that event so often, but they've shared it so often before that it's you've become really strong wiring in their brain. Um, and so you, you're essentially applying this emotional freedom technique, which I, I think I've also heard is like they, they refer to as the tapping technique. Would, would I be right in saying that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's thought, feel, yeah, therapy, okay. and TFT. They're all interlinked to just different forms of it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and, that, and then, then that's, you know, by you, you basically as the practitioner, uh, showing on the client where they should be tapping and what words they need or they come up with the words and and everyone's and different yeah. everyone's different some yeah. people are able to express themselves but a lot of my clients who come to me have not ever had the permission to express themselves so they find yeah. it difficult to be able to language because they're like it's okay them telling the story to everybody else but when it comes to them being with themselves they really struggle to access that. And one of the, I like to call it a genius. We all have geniuses that we're incredible at. I know exactly what needs to be said in order to shift things for people. It's like I'm almost mm -hmm. able to 
go into their body and feel the experience and know exactly what the language is around it to help people through that. Well, that, that takes years and years of experience of doing it, right? In order to yeah, get to that level. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, without any spoken words or anything, you can really feel that person's energy and you're connecting with that energy and really re feeling within yourself what they're feeling. And that's hence you're able to uh, talk their language as to how they're feeling. That's exactly right. I feel um, people's pain. Yeah, I can actually feel people's physical pain as well. So this would also be, you know, apply well to like domestic violence, you know, so, so someone that's been under, uh, you know, long periods of domestic violence, um, I'm thinking you now that suppression uh, and, you know, and a lot of depression is a result of a lot of emotional suppression, you know, and that doesn't have to be domestic violence, but it could be other um, just not sharing and communicating as to how that person's feeling or not thinking there's a right forum to share it or, you know, like, you know, for boys, boys don't cry. Don't express your emotions. You show your vulnerability and weakness. So uh, I can see how this pops up time and time again. And it, 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 what your, you know, your work with your clients is more than just um, working with pain management. You could actually cover a lot of areas uh, in association with mental health. Um, and certainly uh, with the pain work, you you know, you're connecting the mental with the physical side and, and yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. And it's, it's sad that this information is not taught in schools. We're not given a manual of how to raise a child. Our parents have done the best that they can. But you know what? If they've got their own emotional issues, they've had their own abuse stories to have dealt with then that gets projected onto the children and it's just this cycle even the teachers are causing a lot of contribution to children's anxiety as well anxiety is rife in the world because no one in the past has been known how to change this it's not taught in school that anxiety is not normal it's not normal to feel stressed all the time it's not normal for a child who's 10 years of age to have diabetes it's not normal and we're starting to think that it is. And we've let it go and we've gone, oh, but that's just how it is. But it shouldn't be that way. And this is why I'm so passionate about sharing that the mind and body are so deeply connected that you can give someone the best diet in the world, but if they don't have self-worth, that they was told when they were younger that they weren't worth anything in whatever language that was for them, mm the chances of them being able to rehabilitate themselves and stick to the meal plans and stick to the supplements is very mm. minimal. And I know this because I was one of them. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you're, you're just not there and ready uh, to take on new information if you haven't dealt with past trauma uh, or past, you know, experiences or things that are really going to sabotage you to take in new information and apply, you know, new knowledge. Uh, you really need to be getting on top of what you haven't uh, managed to in the past. So, um, yeah, and I agree with you. We certainly need to be teaching more life skills to the children today so that they they have the tools to deal with situations like we're in at the moment with uh, COVID-19. You know, there's uh, anxieties through the roof um, and mental health through the roof as a result of lack of coping mechanisms within society and generally uh, obviously you know you and I have learnt the techniques but uh, beyond that you know there's uh, the general population that's been through the school system that don't have um, you know our techniques or um, haven't learned our techniques so it's, it's so great to have someone like you out there actively teaching people on how to apply these techniques and uh, help them uh, progress and become the best versions of themselves. That's right. So how, do, um, how can people contact you, Dawn? Uh, what's the best way to get in touch with you? And uh, because I, I, there'll be a lot of people out there with everything we mentioned, that, you know, starting with uh, pain management, chronic pain, uh, PTSD, um, you know, depression, anxiety, yeah. Uh, all these things that you, you know, your technique, your new alignment technique can help with. So how can they get in touch with you? So there's two ways. The first way is you can come and join the Facebook community and it's called Heal Yourself. I give lots of free information, tools and techniques and different meditations. I'm a great believer in meditations. However, there's a process. 
So if you've done meditation before and you're like, oh, but I've worked, I can't stay still. I'm in so much pain. I can't stay still. The meditations that I teach are completely different to anything that you've experienced out there. The second way is I actually have a three minute meditation, which you can go onto my website. We'll drop the link in, but it's alleviate pain, a free gift for you. And basically what that is, it's a mini course. It's a meditation to help rewire your systems in your body. It takes three minutes, twice a day, and within about 10 days, you will see massive changes and benefits to your mental health and your physical health just by doing this meditation. So they can download and it's a three minute course. It's got a diary in there and it's got a video about all the science of how it works. And is that on your website? That's on my website, yep. So that's www.alleviatepain.com.au. Fantastic. And the uh, Facebook group is Heal Yourself. So if they just go into a search function and type in Heal Yourself, they'll be able to join your Facebook group page. That's right, yep. I'll send the links across to you as well so they can actually... Fantastic, yeah. I'll include include it in the comments. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. fantastic. It's been awesome uh, chatting, Dawn, and really grateful and insightful and thanks so much for sharing your journey and the way in which you work with clients and how you can help them i I think the work you do is fantastic i really love it and the fact that you've studied so many different techniques and you just you basically bring bringing together the best techniques for that individual uh so i i think you know as, as you said what I practice is uh, very personalized and tailored because everyone's unique and different. And I love how you apply that uh, with the field of work you do. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, pleasure, Dawn. Take care. Bye.